Gerard Thompson. He is the club vice president of public relations and one of our one of the founding members of Fairweather Toastmasters. Mark has been involved with Toastmasters for the past 13 years and found that speaking is his true passion. Mark's purpose in life is to use his gift to help others find their gift. His intention is to leave you with an indelible mark. Mark will be speaking from the advanced manual specialty speeches. This talk is project number two, Uplift the Spirit. The title of the talk is Mindset <coughs> Appreciation. Please join me in welcoming Mark Thompson. Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters. How's everybody doing today? Fabulous. Good. I am humbled every time I hear that introduction because I remember walking through a Toastmasters door 13 years ago and coming into table topics and going, oh my God, I cannot do that. I was truly petrified in trying to do table topics. And I was so ready to get up out of that meeting. I was ready to go. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't come back to Toastmasters until two years later. Table topics just scared me off. But sometimes in life, we've got to fight those fears. And we need to be pushed in life sometimes. And I want to thank Cheryl for, for allowing me to speak today. I emailed her and I said, I'm going to come to the meeting tomorrow. And she says, oh, by the way, you're speaking tomorrow. You still have to speak. I'm like, OK, great job. So I appreciate it because sometimes in life, we need, we need a little push. How many would agree with that? Okay, repeat after me. I have a gift. I have, I have a, a gift. gift. That the world needs. That the world needs. It is my mission. It is my mission. To find and grow my gift. To find and grow my gift. See, I believe I live by the model that becoming is better than being. So we have to try to master this art of fulfillment by becoming something more than we are today. That is what it's about. So today I'm going to talk to you about appreciation. And I want to just strike a little conversation, just have a conversation behind the word appreciation. Think about it. What, what do you appreciate at this very moment? I mean, just think about that. I was talking to Peter earlier today, and he said what he appreciates at this very moment is having members like us that support him and want him to do well. And, and I, I think you're 100% correct, Peter. That is really what Toastmasters is about. But I want you to think about this word appreciation. Do you appreciate your family, maybe your home, maybe even your job? I want you to go back for a minute. I want you to go back. I want you to think about the current job that you have right now. Think about the job that you have right now. And think about the time that you actually were looking at the announcement for the job that you have right now. You're looking at the announcement. You don't have the job yet, but you're looking at it. You're at work thinking, wow, I think I can do that job. So you print out all the information, and you're looking at it. And you're thinking, man, I can do that job. So I want you to go back to that very moment. What emotion comes up when you think about that? I want you to think about actually filling out the application for the job that you have right now. I want you to think about when you turn that application in for the job that you have right now. I want you to think about the emotion you experienced when they said, Peter, we want you to come in for an interview. You're excited, you're ready to go. I want you to go back to that emotion. What emotion did you have? I want you to think about how you felt in that interview. You're giving your answers and you're hoping I really want this job. I want you to go back to the time when they told you, Lisa, that you got the job. Because sometimes it's easy to forget that you were the best at that time with the job. We forget that. With all the things going on in the economy, people having a hard time, we forget, Eric, that we were the chosen one for the job that you have. No, it may not be the perfect job, but it is job. My wife was caught up in the mortgage meltdown here. Six-figure income. Makes, matter of fact, she was making $200,000 a year. Income gone. Now, I don't tell you that to impress you. I tell you that, that things in life change. So I'm learning to appreciate what I had. So you 
finally got that job, you walk into the room in your new job and you're feeling good. I want you to go back to that emotion and appreciating what you have because it's easy to forget with all that's going on in this world. Tough times eventually will hit everybody. I remember when I was, um, I worked, when I worked for the state, or as I worked for the state, I was working rotating shift. I was a water and power dispatcher, and I'm on graveyard shift one night, and I'm thinking to myself, I've been doing this rotating shift for like 17 years, and I saw management and things changing. I thought, you know, it's time to make a change. It's time to do something different. So I'm online looking at all the job announcements, and I see there a job for Associate Hydroelectric Plant Utility Operator. Long title. I went, man. But I looked at the, the, all the qualifications. I thinking, you know, maybe I could do that. So I print out all the paperwork. You know, I'm looking at it. And you know what happens when you see that or things are new in life? That little voice comes into the back of your mind. Oh, you can't get that job, Lisa. You can't do that. And that came into the back of my mind. Like, oh, you can't do that job. They want somebody with a degree. I didn't have a degree. So I brought the paperwork home to my wife. And I said, you know, this looks like a pretty good job. She says, you should apply, Mark. She says, you're just as qualified as anybody else. You've got 17 years of experience. Why not apply? I'm like, hey, I'm going to go ahead and apply for the job. So I went ahead and applied and got a response saying, we invite you to an interview. I'm thinking, oh, great. I got an interview. Meanwhile, I'm thinking, oh, they're probably not going to pick me because I don't have a degree. They prefer a degree. So I'm in the interview, I'm talking with them, and it's feeling pretty good. And I remember at the end of this interview, I said to the, uh, one of the, the, the panelists, one of the, this guy's name was Hamid, I said, um, Donald Trump once said that sometimes it is better to hire experience and attitude over the degree. And I left it. I figured, you know, I'm doing the best that I can. So... I leave, you know, a couple weeks later, I thought, well, they're not going to hire me. So I'm at home. Two, three, three weeks later, I'm at home in the shower. And my wife comes running up. She says, somebody's on the phone for you. I'm like, who is sitting on the phone for me? She says, somebody from your work. I'm like, from my work? I'm like, well, I'm going to work. Why would they be calling me? And she said, well, it was some guy named Hamid. I'm like, well, who is Hamid? I don't know who Hamid is. And then I thought, Hamid was in that interview panel. So I jump out of the shower, grab the phone. And he says, we're going to bring you on. At that moment, I knew my life had changed. At, at that very second, straight days, weekends off, consistent schedule, I could go back to school, I could pursue the passion and dreams that I had. I knew at that very moment that my life very moment because I took that chance and when I come into work every day I bring a mindset of appreciation in because I know what it's like to have a bad schedule I know what it's like to have a job that you just really didn't like but I chose quality of life over money. To make a long story short, I actually took a pay cut to get the job that I have right now. And it was the best $20,000 that I ever spent. Because if I had not taken that pay cut, I probably wouldn't be standing before you today. So I'm learning to appreciate what I have. Is it perfect? No. I'm not, I'm not coming at you as a speaker that has everything figured out and my life is perfect? No. I have trials, tribulations, problems, family things, just like you. But I'm learning to appreciate what I have. I'm learning to appreciate the meetings that I come to. I'm learning to appreciate the opportunities that are given to me now. I appreciate what I have. Because let me just say this. Life can always be worse. So I appreciate what I have. So when you go back to your desk this afternoon, maybe look around, maybe you have a window. I didn't ever have a window in my prior job. I have a window that I love and I appreciate it now. So look around and see what you appreciate about your job. And I
close with this. How many believe that anything is possible if you believe? How many of you believe that? See, I believe anything is possible. If ever there were time to dare, if ever there were time to dream, if ever there were time to pursue a passion, the time is now. I mean right now. I mean there is a boldness in the power of now. There is a magic in the power of now. Will it be difficult? Yes. There will be tough days ahead. There will be days that you will want to turn back on your dream. There will be days that you will doubt you are on the right path. But your dream, our dream, is far too important to stop. Because if you stop, you will only prove right those who told you you could not achieve. So there will be tough days ahead. But in the words of John F. Kennedy, we are going to put a man on the moon not because it's easy, but because it's hard. Boldness in his belief. We must have boldness in our belief. The belief that hard work will pay off. The belief that our dream matters. The belief that we matter. Because deep down inside, we all have that same question. Do we matter? Not to our coworkers, not to our family, but in this world. Do we matter? And when, when, when we have a belief in ourselves, yes, we matter. So let's have boldness in our belief. Let's shoot for the stars. Let's go to the moon and remember that anything is possible. Until next time, the indelible mark reminding you that <laughs> becoming is better than being. Interesting. Both of our speeches today involved interviews. Yeah.